Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today I'm joined by my colleague Amanda Lind, a technical content writer here at the company. Today, Amanda will be talking to us about the new SWAS separation tool in Global Mapper Pro. All right, Amanda, take it away. Thanks, Rachel. So new in version 24 is a tool that lets you create swath separation images, uh, useful for users who work with USGS. This tool creates um, a geotiff layer that symbolizes the differences in elevation between two different swaths or flight lines within your LiDAR data. While there are tools in Global Mapper that let you correct the differences between two point clouds or between two flight lines, if you've separated them into two different layers, um, this tool just lets you visualize the differences to help in quality assurance purposes. So this data that I have loaded here today, I've pre-colored it by point source ID. The point clouds will need to have point source, point source ID written into their attributes to be able to work with this tool, or they, they will need to be saved in separate layers. But now that I have it colored by point source ID, we can see one is red and one is blue, and we can see that there's a bit of overlap between these two fly lines. And this overlap is what we're going to be measuring with the swath separation tool. Now this tool has its own little icon in the LiDAR toolbar up here. So I'll click on that to open the dialog, and we can choose if we had multiple layers, we would choose those here. The spatial, spatial resolution, because we are creating a TIFF, that's going to be the resolution of the both the output and the resolution that the data will be assessed by. You can choose point spacings, which of course is going to vary from point cloud to point cloud, or you can set a more standard option by choosing meters or feet. You can also choose the method that your grid is going to be gridded by. Um, the default, especially for USGS specifications, is to tin it, but we would recommend for other users to use the binning option, as this won't be quite as noisy as the tin would with um, overlapping LiDAR points. I'm going to choose average here. You can choose which returns to use, whether um, last you get the top of any structures or single returns where you'll get ground or top of building returns. And you can choose a shader. So um, how do you want these points to be visualized? There are two different shaders here that we've added in version 24 specifically for this tool. There's um, QLO, and you can see the symbology for that here, where all points that have um, less than zero centimeters between the points in the other point cloud will be um, um, symbolized with a green square in the grid versus um, four to eight will be yellow and eight and higher is red. And then we look at a different one with QL1, QL2 that has a, a slightly different symbology. Symbol. It, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you wanna add a different shader, you can add a custom shader here in the tools um, within Global Mapper's configuration dialog. But these settings set, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It'll save as a grid. Geo, uh, GeoTIFF is the default, but you can choose a few other options here. I'm just going to name it a very creative name. It will generate this GeoTIFF. So we can see that the points here that were not overlapped are colored by intensity. But if I scroll in the middle here, you can see that these overlapping areas have generated a little bit of color here. So the ground here is green. This means that the point clouds, the points, uh, point clouds are pretty close together. But we can see that there is some difference between the point clouds at the edge of buildings and in vegetation, and that's pretty much to be expected. Um, to look into this a little bit more. If I drop the LiDAR on top of it, we can see that this red swath, which was looking at the building from the south, was able to get a better look at the south side of the building here. So they're all red points and no blue. So that, of course, has shown up as a higher error issue. And there we go. That's how you create your swath separation index. Amanda, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. I know that our users will find it very useful. To learn more about Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, please visit bloomerballgeo.com today. And as always, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Ask the Experts.